she's about to blow, sir. Flack must have sliced an oil line over the target. Open cow flaps. Air open. Power off. Fuel off. Off. Feather for. Feathered. Pilot to crew. We're minus one engine. I'll have to leave formation. Watch for fighters. Radovich is dropping out, John. How's this fire? It's out, number four is feathered. How long till our fighter escort shows up? Five minutes. Pilots and crew, anybody spot enemy fighters anywhere? Take a good look. No, sir. Negative. All right, pilots and crew. I'm dropping back to cover Captain Brodovich till our fighter cover shows up. Eyes open, troops. Johnny Turno. What's his call sign? Red X-ray. Red easy to red X-ray. What do you think you're doing? Get back in the formation. Red easy, this is red X-ray. We'll cover your friend till our fighter escort shows up. Over. Red X-ray, you are violating procedure. Now get back where you belong. Well, excuse me, Captain. I was just trying to save your neck. Forget about my neck. You have jeopardized the squadron. Now get out of here, Red X-Ray. I'm putting you on report. 12 o'clock high. A QM production. Starring Paul Burt. Also starring Frank Overton and Chris Robinson with guest stars Don Gordon. Jill Ireland, Don Quine. Tonight's episode, The Survivor. Colonel Gallagher, both sides of this. Now, what did Lieutenant Turnu do that was wrong? He saw a fellow pilot in trouble. Sir, he weakened the whole formation. The command pilot said that you were less than five minutes away from your fighter rendezvous. Turnu dropped back to cover you. You trailed the formation, but neither one of you broke it. Yet you put him on report. Well, sir, it seems to me when a pilot throws the book out the window. The book also mentions teamwork, morale. Aren't they parts of the group integrity? Group integrity means pilots and personnel obeying orders and airplanes flying where they belong. Sir, nothing personal against Tornow, but there was never any reason for him to play hero on my account. You flew 14 missions with the 966. You were shot down once. Good record. I don't know how it was at the 966, but here at the 918th, group morale is very important. It happens to be the... You mean I'm fouling up morale, sir? It happens to be the backbone of a pretty good combat record. Sir, a man comes over here to fly a bomber. The job's enough to think about. You let your personal feelings get involved, and that's when things really get fouled up. Now, those are facts, sir. You know, the difference between facts and the truth can be very interesting. I'm a lawyer in private life. Now, if I had you on the witness stand, I'd say to myself, this man has his facts too well rehearsed. All right, I'll give the facts to Colonel Gallagher. But I have a feeling that the real Captain Bradovich is a better man than these particular facts would seem to indicate. That's all, Captain. 
sir. Quiet little party, she said. Of course, she did mention I could bring along three or four of my more handsome buddies. Oh. <laughs> so quickly you, uh, you thought of me, right? I said handsome, Stan. Of course, now that lets you out. I'll just have to, uh... Hey, Johnny. How about letting me invite Ernie to the party? Branovich? What do you want, gloom in the room? Oh, now don't be such a hard nose. He's not such a bad guy. I fly with them, I ought to know. Captain? Hi. Hi. Hey, um, we're short a man on a little party tonight, and... and but, uh, uh, why don't you sit down? I'll buy you No, beers. no, no, thanks. We just, uh... Look, I know you haven't had a chance to meet any of the girls in Archbury, and... No, thanks. Uh, it's <laughs> tonight. It's a real friendly group. You know, it's sort of a family type, huh? I said no thank you, Lieutenant. Sorry if I bothered you. I'm on level with you, Stan. I don't think he's worth the effort. Oh, he just... probably feels bad about you and him on the mission. Eighteenth Officers Club. Yes, madam. Captain Bradovich. There's a lady calling Captain Ernie Bradovich. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Sarah. Oh. <laughs> no, no, of course I am. All right, Sarah. Sure. As soon as I can. As soon as I can. It's not exactly Buckingham Palace, is it? And there's no wireless. Well, I have a radio. I'll, uh, I'll bring it over. It's small and it's dreary. I expect I can keep it warm. I realize it isn't much, but there isn't much of anything in this town. Sarah, maybe you should have stayed in London. Things didn't work out in London. Well, look, there's a, there's a taxi waiting. Shall we take the flat? on the incident concerning you two. Now, I want to ask you one thing. Either one of you harboring any hard feelings? No, sir. No, sir. All right, Lieutenant, that'll be all. All right, Colonel. Captain. Sir. A couple of words from you, and I think you'd have a pretty good friend there. He's a good pilot, sir. Trying to be a friend was the mistake he made. 
I don't agree, Captain. I mean, this isn't a social club, but we do try to work together here. I think the sooner you learn that, the better off you're going to be. All right, Captain, that's all. Have a good day. Sir. longer to the IP, over. Navigator to pilot. Seven minutes, sir. Raj. Weather said it would be clear over the target area. I hope they're right. I guess I must have sounded pretty stupid last night. I hear any? I didn't hear you. I'm trying to fix you up with a girlfriend. None of us knew you were all sewed up. Now you know. Yeah. Somebody saw you together in town. Um, Dickie, I think it was. <laughs> hey, Ernie. Why don't you introduce her? I'm told this isn't a social club. Oh, come on off it. I'm not going to try and beat your time. I'll tell you what, I'll act real nasty and you'll never know how lovable I am. <laughs> Easy, I'll tell you something. Yeah. Co-pilot I used to have. Real good friend of mine. Top turret to crew. Fighters, 11 o'clock high. Ramrod to formation. Pull it in, boys, pull it in. The tighter you fly, the more it costs them. I say again, Red Easy is dropping out. Chatter and watch out for fighters. Ramrod out. Red easy. That's Ernie Bradovich. Yeah, Bradovich. Nine other men. Hey, you guys in the news? They're bringing in some survivors. I hear it's Ernie Bradovich's crew. Then where is Lieutenant Ainsley and the rest? I haven't any idea, Lieutenant. You must know something. You had to be the last one to jump. No other first. I only saw one parachute. Well, I... Uh... Ordered them to get Lieutenant Aisley and the rest of the wounded out. I, I don't know who went out first. Maybe the navigator. 
Well, somebody must have seen more than one shoot. Well, we were all pretty busy at the time, Captain. And then we lost you in those clouds. Well, uh, I flew on for ten minutes before I jumped. And you're confident you didn't order the bailout too soon? What's this all going to add up to, sir? Well, I mean, uh, am I wrong either way just because I survived? Now, hold on a minute. Nobody's blaming you for coming back. You think not? Ask around, sir. Look, if this is going to diminish your effectiveness as a pilot and an officer, I don't have to ask any questions, Captain. And if it has, there's nothing I can do about it. That's strictly up to you. That's all, Captain. Sir. What do you think? I don't know, Harley. He's certainly not the first man to come back alone. It wasn't him. It would be a problem. Why don't you ground him for a while? Send him on leave. No, that would be like passing judgment. You just uh, put a crew together, and if we do have to fly tomorrow, assign him to an airplane. Isn't that taking a gamble? Yeah, he's a good pilot, Harley. Huh? Well, nobody I assign is going to like it. Maybe I can say a few good words on his behalf. No, I wouldn't do that. Let him earn their respect and confidence. Let him earn it or let him spin out. Stovall find you yet? No. Word came in from the French. They just located your aircraft. Oh? Two bodies, no survivors reported yet. Thank you, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Ernie, let's go. I'm starved. Oh, you brought a friend. Uh, no, ma'am. I, I just... My name's Sarah. Ernie? Oh, this is, uh... This is Sergeant Kamansky. Hello. Ma'am. Well, where should we eat? The Denby Lion's lively. How's the food? Ma'am, we weren't together. I just stopped by to give your husband a message. Husband? I lost my husband. Sergeant, uh, this lady's not my wife. I'm just taking her to dinner. Sorry, sir. Go somewhere lively tonight. It's been deadly dull for me. Sarah, look, uh, let's just go eat. Huh? I'm, I've got to get back to the base, and you ought to be with a baby. Hey, Captain, can I ride out with you? I have to fly for you today. How come? Uh, Sergeant Brack got sick. Oh. The well-known head cold? Uh, yes, sir. Well, the um, colonel did me an honor assigning you. I made the assignment myself, sir. I, I mean, it was my idea. You volunteered? Uh, yes, sir. Come with me, Sergeant. Colonel! Sir! May I see you, please? Yes, what is it? Sir, I request Kamansky be, be relieved, and you assign me another flight engineer. Well, why do you ask, Captain? I want no volunteers in my airplane. Will you fly it the way it's set up. That'll be all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. You know, Brenovich, if a man tries so hard to withdraw from this world, it begins to look like he has a guilty conscience. Ship, sir. She's had a little wear and tear, but I checked her over with the crew chief last night. 
She'll fly. Okay. Turn him over. Lieutenant Dickey, it's time to warm up the engines. Yes, sir. crew, take off positions. Gunners, please acknowledge. Gunners, are you in take off position? Acknowledge. Left voice to flight deck. Were you calling us? Over. Flight engineer Gunners, get in your take off positions and report. All secure back here. Arch break control, 361, clear for takeoff. Roger control. Power. <laughs> Remember one thing. This is a combat mission. I'll do my job, you do yours. Period. My name is Alexander Kamansky. It's a long name. When we get back from this little ride, I'll tattoo every letter of it on the skin of the next man that fails to show proper respect for this aircraft commander. Do you think I'm kidding? Raise your right hand. No one you will report to the pilot unless otherwise instructed. Sarah. Oh, there he is. All right, come on, Sarah. Let's go get something to eat. Come on. Eat. How practical. Oh, run along, dearie. Everything's cheery. Sarah. Where's my nice young man? Sarah. Now, the housekeeper says you've been gone all day. Only since 11. She's a liar. Oh, there he is. You're not abandoning the ship now, are you, Sarah? You two know each other, I'm sure. You're not being fair to the baby. Leave me alone. Well, what am I supposed to do? Sit in that flat day in and day out? Lieutenant, you don't understand this situation. Now, please. Ah, but you understand Leave Me Alone, don't you, Captain? Hey, that's your theme song, isn't it? Uh, stay out of my life. Uh, don't get me involved. Sarah. Buzz off. To life. Whiskey, please. I suppose I should be feeling ashamed of myself. It's been awfully good ever since Wally was killed. It was your husband, huh? They were friends. I wouldn't have even figured Bradovich to have a friend. They went to university together. And he never really liked me much. They both had girls back in the States. But still, he's taken care of me and the baby ever since. Only sometimes it's more like prison. Oh, 
come on. I'm not going to sit here and stare at him for hours. Take me somewhere. Ah. You have found yourself the exact right man. Oh, good. Chin up, chin up. William says you left the pub with Sarah Blodgett. Later, Captain Bradovich followed. What happened then? Then I woke up with this very large size head. Well, what happened in between? In between, he belted me. Ask him. Look, I admit that I tried to move in on this girl, but he was acting like he owned her, so... Uh... Lieutenant, the captain has already admitted that he hit you. Now, are you admitting that you provoked it? Well, it's pretty difficult to uh, admit something that you don't remember, Colonel. Why don't you ask the girl? Leave her out of this. All right, Captain, let's go. Now leave Sarah out of this. Come on. Take these, please, Lieutenant. Lady, Captain Bradovich is really in serious trouble. And you run out like this is going to make things look worse. Like he had no reason at all for assaulting a fellow officer. I don't see why it makes any difference to you. Well, I've been where he is, trying to shut other people out. I was the only survivor in a bomber that went down. Ma'am, he's got some kind of load on his back. He thinks he has to carry it alone. He's wrecking himself. Would you like to know what his burden is? It's me. Ma'am, that's none of my business. Me and my baby. Wally's baby. I'll take care of you, he said. For Wally's sake. What was your husband, a pilot? He was Ernie's co-pilot. Only Bradovich and Wally Blodgett, pals. Great pals. Wally could have saved himself too, but he saved his pal instead. They gave my husband a medal for dying. How about that? For staying behind and getting his wounded friend out of the ship. And then being caught inside when it blew up. Something for the mantelpiece. That's all this means to you. May I give it to Captain Bradovich? I'd like to lie about it. I'd hate for it to turn out to be my fault instead of his. 
Now, Doc Kaiser said that it might come back to me, but all I remember now is walking down the street with her, stopping, and then the lights went out. Colonel, please believe me, I don't want to get the lieutenant into trouble, but he did get fresh, and I hit him with my handbag. All right, Lieutenant. That'll be all. Yes, sir? Mrs. Blodgett, thank you very much. Sergeant Kamansky will see you to your flat. Sarah! Oh. Come to your place as soon as I can. Don't. Just don't. Excuse me, Colonel. Look, it's better if I go back to London. My mother can help with the baby. Wally's baby. But you see, it's my baby, too. And you just... Goodbye, Annie. Sarah. Just what did you hope to accomplish by taking the blame for Torneau? Oh, I... Uh... Oh, well, sir, uh, you see, I didn't know how bad he was hurt, and, and Sarah had to care for the child. The child? This doesn't make any sense at all. You're the type of man who is constantly rejecting friendships, and yet you voluntarily accepted the responsibility of what could have been a murder charge. That was my choice, Colonel. I have to live with myself, and only myself. Now, because of her husband, I owe it to her. Oh, yes, I heard the story about you and her husband from your old outfit. He was your co-pilot, right? And my buddy. Sir. My buddy elected to die in my place. So now you've elected to take care of his family. All right, that's fine. But do you think that's the only reason that man sacrificed himself? I don't know, sir. But somebody's got to take care of her. What about your obligation to the men you fly with, Captain? I do my job. No, you don't do your job. And you know why? Because you are so committed to a dead man that living man can't count on you. You believe I abandoned my crew the other day, don't you? Most of the men do, yes. Because you have convinced them that you're the type of man who would abandon a crew. They don't trust you, Bradovich. You're a bad risk. Colonel, I request a transfer. Not a chance. Do you think I'm going to palm you off on another group, Commander? No, Bradovich. Nobody here wants to fly with you, and nobody over there would want to fly with you. And I've got a hunch if your buddy Blodgett was still alive, he wouldn't want to fly with you either, the way you are now. No, sir, I'm going to keep you right here, behind a desk somewhere. As of now, you are grounded. Colonel, I said grounded. Dismissed. Sir. Joe Wing just called. We're on standby alert. Fine, thanks. These walls aren't too thick. I heard you say grounded. Did you mean it? There's just no way I can save that man, Harvey. Except to give him what he thinks he wants. Shut him out. Cut him off. Well, he left here like lightning, looking for a place to strike. Maybe it worked. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. He's a pilot. And maybe he's a good one. But I have a little gadget on my control panel called uh, Automatic Pilot. It'll fly the airplane, too. The only problem there is, is that it doesn't have any feelings.
Colonel, you fly me tomorrow. This group's going out. You put me in an airplane and you fly me. Understand? Yes, Captain, I think I do. Oh. Thank you, sir. shouldn't be too bad, but the fighter response over this target is always pretty rough. Okay, radio silence now until you hear from me. Ramrod out. All right, mount up. Either of you two talked to Captain Bradovitz this morning. I talked to Dickie and Williams. Would you care to know that they're not too happy? Yes, sir, if you're worried about your decision to fly him today, I... Sergeant, I am not worried. Better mount up. Yes, sir. Bombardier to pilot. Bombs away in 15 seconds, sir. Roger. Pilot to Bombardier. It's all yours. Break red leader over. Red leader, read you. Over. This is Ramrod. I've got an engine acting up. I'm going to drop back and see if I can save her. You take him home. Ramrod out. Flight engineer to all gunners. I'm out of the turret. Stay alert. Skipper, I think we popped an oil line. Not too hot, yes, sir. I think we can hold it. Okay. I'm going to drop down and see if we can tag onto that rear squadron as it passes. As a skipper, Captain. Back to cover you. Fighters, eight o'clock high. Pilot to crew, report damage. That voice to pilot. Right waist gunner is wounded, sir. I think they hit number three. We're losing power. It's a pilot. Four dropping out of Green Squadron to join us, Skipper. Who is that? I can't see his number yet. Ramrod to Green Straggler. Ramrod to Green Straggler. This airplane is under control. We're all right here. You get back to formation. Acknowledge. Over. Green easy to Ramrod. This is Bradovich. I wish I could say this is voluntary, sir, that I'm trying to prove something, but... The fact is, I've got battle damage. I, I, I can't keep up with him. Ramrod to Green Easy. Can you keep up with me? Over. Green Easy to Ramrod. I don't think so. They're out. Ramrod to Green Easy. Bail him out. Bail him out. Captain, can you get me out? Take it easy, Dickie. Take it easy. 
Relax. Pretty easy to ramrod. I'll bail out those who can. I've got a couple aboard who can't. I'm changing course. Two, seven, six, magnetic. I'm heading right to England. For the living, sir. Breathe easy out. He's had it, Skipper. He's burning. Suppose he pushed it too hard trying to prove a point. I hope not. But if he got that fire under control. It's Bradovich. He's coming in, gear up. Archbury Control. We need an ambulance. Thank you, Sergeant. You're welcome, sir. Drop over to the Denby line, I'll buy you a drink. <laughs> thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, not just now, I'm in a kind of a hurry, but thanks anyway. Okay, Captain Bradovich. Anytime. Nice to have a visitor. I, uh... Well? I, uh, I thought you were going to London. I'm not. Well, uh... Um... I can come and see the baby then. I mean, I mean, once in a while, if stay. Are you going to stay? Well, anyway, the weather's been nicer here. Yeah, well, it sure has. Sarah. Yes? Yes, sir. How's Lieutenant Dickey? He's still critical, but he'll survive. So listen, you're not in London, are you? Uh, no, sir. Archbury. It seems Mrs. Blodgett never left town, so I took Captain Bradovich over there. All right, Sergeant. Oh, Sandy, listen, as long as you have the Jeep, you can have the rest of the afternoon off if you'd like. Oh, thank you, sir. What about Bradovich's request for transfer? Well, I wouldn't throw it away, Harvey, but uh, let's see when he gets back from leave if he'll bring it up. He knows he can't beat us, so maybe he'll join us. Mm -hmm. 